Well, good evening to you. Welcome to the Lord's house and thank God for a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. It really is. It's gorgeous outside. I know uh, the weather uh, kind of be somewhat deceiving, I guess, a little bit. It can be cold uh, one moment, uh, next next moment it'd be, you know, you look at everything, man, it's going to be real. But I think tonight it actually is getting kind of on the warm side of Andy, Danny. Amen. But anyhow, that's what happens when you get closer to summer. It gets warmer. Amen. Welcome to God's house. You know, what a wonderful memorial day. When I stop to think about and ponder, how many of y'all in here uh, have uh, family members that uh, served in the military or you yourself served in the military? Look all over the house, amen. We, we all got people we're connected to that uh, was in the military. Now, out of that, is there anybody in here who lost a loved one in war? Amen, amen. So thank God for those that came home, but let's not forget those that have died on the battlefield. Amen. And uh, that's why we do. That's why we have Memorial Day. Uh, we were talking to my kids uh, over the last couple of weeks. We've been going back over to uh, one of the graveyards where our family's been buried at and looking over uh, uh, some of those old uh, uh, tombstones and such where some family members are. And I, I tell you, it's really good to remember and reflect on uh, those that came before us. And, it, it, you know, Memorial Day is a great time. A matter of fact, uh, back in the day, uh, it was real serious because uh, families would get together and go to the graveyards to decorate. And unfortunately, Brother Mike, I don't see a lot of that going on these days. Uh, so we do need to get back to some of those old ways because uh, it's important to remember those that came before us. Amen. Amen. And uh, for those of you at home, we're glad to have you all with us tonight. Uh, thank God for the opportunity. And thank God for the simple fact is that he's in control. Amen. Now. Psalms 129 says, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. You know, there's a lot of things that come down on us, a lot of things they try to inflict over on us. But you know what? God has the upper, uh, upper hand, and sooner or later we're going to come out on top. Say amen right there. You know, it's just what it is. They try to. You know, uh, you think about how they try to stop Jesus every step of the way. You know what? Death couldn't hold him. Grave <laughs> couldn't conceal him. He came out on top. Say amen right there. Amen. That's exactly why we know that we are going to come out on top because our Lord and Savior gives all power and has all power. All right. Let's go to Lord in prayer and ask him to help be with us tonight through the service. Christ uh, Jesus, Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, thank you for the privilege to be able to come to thee. I thank you for each one is in your house tonight and thank you for the service that many have done for this freedom that we have. And I pray, Lord, you'll help us, guide us, and direct us as we do go forward. I pray, Lord, that we'll never fail to acknowledge or cherish the very blessings that you bestow upon us. Now, Lord, help each and every heart. And I pray, Lord, that you'll take this message and spread it throughout the world as you will. In Christ's name, amen. Brother John. Amen. And tonight, the choir did practice, and we want to tell all y'all that are home, Miss Doris and some of the other Miss Judy, y'all, we miss y'all in choir practice, and we know why you're at home, and that's fine. Amen. Amen. But we do want you to know that you was in our hearts and singing with us tonight. And if you're not here for the sunrise service and the Easter service, we understand that, but we want everyone, not just them, but everyone yes, that's amen. in the choir, know that we're thinking about you and, and have y'all in our hearts singing, and we, and we know that you'll help us with it. Amen. If you would stand with me, follow your book. <laughs>
sung that off the pillow. That's the first time we've had the music to it. So see, it is pretty song. Because <laughs> I always mess the notes up and do them the same way. Well, yeah. <laughs> Count your blessings, amen. <laughs> sacrifices and put some time in. Amen. Amen. And so I would to God that we'd see more and more mamas do that. And, uh, you know, it's like the old saying goes, the hand that rocks the crater rules the world. You know, you think about what gets instilled into kids. And so we're going to do that. We're going to celebrate mamas. And, uh, and then dads, you're not going to get kicked to the curb because in a few weeks after that, it's going to be daddy's day around here. And so we're looking forward to all these things. But now Sunday morning, 530 in the morning, I know uh, that's early. People are like, well, I'm pretty sure that's awful early and everything. If you make it up here for the morning service, that's why it's called sunrise service. We're going to have a sunrise service here kicking off at 530 in the morning and everything. And so in there, we've already had some already sign the paper out front. And if you have it and would like to be here and going to have breakfast with us, that's why we actually get to sign the paper out front so that we know how many people are going to be uh, for breakfast. Amen. And so we'll do breakfast immediately after the service that morning. And then you say, well, what are we going to do until Sunday school hour? Well, uh, some may uh, run back to the house and get changed. I then talked to a few that's going to be doing some cooking and said, preacher, I'm going to go back to the house and get uh, my clothes changed. And, well, that's all right. Because then we'll have Sunday school at the regular hour. We have the morning service at the regular hour and all like that. And then, of course, we'll have the evening service. But that all is happening next Sunday, which we'll be celebrating Easter Sunday, like I said. And uh, we'll make sure that all the kids that come will load them down with as much candy as possible Here's a little secret on that little deal right there, Brother Jeff. We'll make sure that we give it to them on the way out. <laughs> Amen. You know why? Have you ever seen kids, uh, a lot of them in a church building with a lot of sugar in them? They bounce off walls. Amen right there. So we'll do that. We'll load them down with the sugar as they're going out the door. And, uh, and so I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. It's just the breaks of being the parents. Amen. But uh, anyhow. We just want to do that and make sure that uh, we, we'll just uh, have a wonderful time at the Lord's house next Sunday. 
and then the following Sunday, like I said. And these are the things that are on our uh, on our list, I guess you might would say. Uh, tonight, of course, they're having a master's club in the, in the back, and we're glad to have that. Yeah, Brother John. And you do not have to be a member here to come to the Sunrise. That's right. Now, don't worry about that. I didn't say they had to be church members. I said just show up. I'm just 530. Letting... Yeah, people. I don't care. We got some folks. Uh, we got some folks that's been tuning in with us. Some uh, brother uh, who's a pastor down there in, uh, in Pakistan. He's been staying up with me and conversing with me and everything. And uh, as we've been uh, communing, uh, him and I back and forth, and, and he's a pastor himself. And uh, he's talking about the difficult times, and, and there, there's, there's some hunger there. And uh, But anyways, we need to pray for them, by the way. But uh, as uh, we've been conversing and everything, if that brother want to get on an airplane and come all the way here to Tennessee, I guarantee you we'd sure uh, we'd roll out the red carpet and we'd treat them, treat them in a good way. Same in right there. Amen. You see, the thing is, like, like I always used to say, when you come, you're family. Just learn how to do it the right way. Amen. The fact is, is that uh, we are. If you got Christ in your heart, I got Christ in my heart, that makes us family right there. Same Amen. Amen. And so that's why we do the things we do. And we rejoice over these things. And when family ain't here, like you mentioned, you was talking about Miss Doris and all and, and everything, different ones, Miss Glenda. And, and uh, you know, there, there's so many different ones that, uh, that, we, that unfortunately we've been praying for that, uh, you know, the, the shutdown and all like that. And... Uh, but, you know, we, we pray for these. We pray one for Brother Lonnie. You know, keep Brother Lonnie in your prayers. Uh, matter of fact, this week, uh, uh, of course, Miss Linda uh, is, uh, is with Brother Lonnie. Y'all remember Brother Lonnie. He is, uh, they got to take in order uh, to, for them to do the surgery on Brother Lonnie. Remember, he had a heart attack just about, about uh, nearly two months ago now. And uh, they're going to have to take him, put him under anesthesia and in order for that to happen. And so... Uh, they need to do that this week, and, and uh, so they're praying that the uh, heart doctor will let them do that and everything, uh, because he needs this surgery. So y'all pray, y'all pray one for another. I mean, there's there's so much, so many different things we need to be praying for, lifting each other up in prayer. And uh, yeah, Jeff. Uh, my little niece in the Philippines is worse shape. She's in the hospital now. She's on IV. Uh, they're waiting on the doctors to show up because it's ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, Jeff was sharing this morning his little niece, uh, Julie's uh, uh, sister, I guess it is, uh, daughter. Yeah. And uh, she, a uh, little two-year-old, and uh, she had 104 temperature this morning. And uh, she got worse. They had to take her to the hospital, and they got her on an IV. Uh, IV. And we lift, lift up that little girl. She's in the Philippines, still need to pray for her. Doesn't matter. She's, she's, a, she's a child that God has given life to that we care about, and we need to pray for her. Say amen right there. Amen. It's, it's, and we're going to do that, have a word of prayer here in a moment about these things. Matter of fact, Brother Tim, as you pray, just remember these things and all. And, uh, and then, of course, asking God's uh, blessings upon the offering. And, uh, and that's the important part. Uh, and then, of course, uh, thank God it was good to see Miss Priscilla this morning. I was looking at some of my previous notes right here where she has been battling the blood pressure. But it sure was good to see her this morning. And it truly was. But uh, these are the things, brothers and sisters, as we... Uh, go forward. That's why the importance of the church is so that we can lean on one another and, and lift each other up in prayer and help one another when it's needed. Amen. And uh, it's much bigger than you or I. And thank God for that. Matter of fact, if you'll study your Bible, you'll find out the best we can do is when we get beyond us and start reaching out and help the needs of others. Amen. And that's why we're here. Uh, so thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for the offering. And uh, Brother Tim, as you pray, y'all pray at home. And also pray for uh, the, the service tonight, Brother Tim. Father who art in heaven, we come before you tonight to thank you most of all, Lord, for your son as we remember him on this Memorial Day and what he's done for us, his sacrifice, that he gave his life that we might live an eternal life with you. We also ask that you be with the pastor tonight as uh, he preaches a sermon, that it be the words that we need to hear. We thank you for all the veterans that have given their life or have served their country. We are thankful for that, Lord. We're thankful that we live in a country that is a Christian-bound country and that serves thee. We pray that all this country would get on our knees and serve thee, O oh Lord. We ask you to watch over Jeff's niece in the Philippines who has a temperature of 104. We ask you that you have your hand upon her, Lord, and be with Brother Lonnie as he gets ready to have surgery. That everything go well with him and that your hand will be on him as too, Lord. Uh, we pray for the offering that it be used to thy service, O Lord, and 
all of our members here that you just have a hedge of protection around us until that time when you call us home, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's in Miami, so we're going to get this week. I hope. We hope. <laughs> Miami, Georgia, to Chattanooga. All right. That's, we're, we're hoping. We're hoping. It's it's moving that then. It's they moving. had it out to California and quarantine for all that time, and so it's, they, they got it moving. It's coming our way. So we're looking forward to that. See, when we finally get our camera, we're going to be able to put it on the back wall back there, and that way and we'll be able to run everything through our sound system. So you'll get a better sound at home, and you'll get a better picture, and all like that. And uh, so we're looking forward. See, we've got a camera here, but it's so old and outdated, and nothing, nothing wrong with the camera, you know, other than the fact is, it's not digital. And everything now has to be digital and all. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Ephesians in chapter number six. Ephesians in chapter number six. I want you to go back with me to uh, the text tonight. We're gonna to look at a whole different uh, message, if you will. I know you're uh, scratching the head, so well, preacher, that's where we were this morning. Hey, you. I tell you, I've heard uh, many, many messages out of John 3, 16, and they all were different. Say amen right there. It's the thing about the Word of God. There's so much in there that if you start a study today, for the rest of your life, you'll never uh, expunge all the things out of the Word of God. I mean, there's so much there. There's so much there. I've been studying it for years, and there's so much I'm still learning every day. Amen? And so uh, I'm just still amazed at how the Word of God is. But if you will, go back with me tonight in Ephesians in chapter number 6. And I want to look at something back to what the Lord said here, uh, stating in verse number 14. Uh, Ephesians 6, verse number 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery hearts of the wicked, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then here's the key that unlocks it all. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now let me read that again so that you get a hold of it and you understand what he's saying here. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. He says, for all saints, we need to lift each other from prayer. We need each other. I don't know how in the world we think we can survive any other way, but we do need each other in a very big way. Amen. And we're going to need each other that much the more as we see the days approaching. Amen. As we go forward, we need each other that much the more. And it's important for us to pray daily one for another. Let's go Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here tonight. Lord, being the message tonight is only you can. Now, Lord, remind us the value of lifting each other up and caring one for another in these days and times in which we're living. Lord, I pray that we'll not get selfish or self-centered or self-serving, but, Lord, we'll be sacrificing ourselves and reaching out to the needs of others. And I pray, Lord, that we'll do such a thing as that so that we'll see a lot of souls uh, uh, changed, a lot, of, a lot of souls saved, and lives uh, developed and prospering, dear Lord. And we praise uh, your name and all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 
Now, I want to get back in verse number. That's called dust. Amen. Y'all know what that is. That's called springtime. Dust kicks up, and it just kind of affects us that way. But anyhow, now, I want to remind you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 and verse number 12. Romans 13 and verse number 12. He says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. He says, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. What is he talking about? Put on Jesus. Is he talking in a morbid sense here? No. What he's saying is we ought to act like what we say that we are Christians. We ought to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. Amen. Hey, it's more than just verbalizing words. It's with our actions we ought to glorify the Lord. Say amen right there. The truth of the matter is it's more than just words. How you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself. He says it's time to put off. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Do you not understand the times in which we're living in? The only way they're going to see Jesus Christ is in us, through us, and with us. I remember my grandmother used to say over and over and over, and uh, God bless her. I tell you, she lived to be 93, and uh, my grandma, a little uh, little Miss uh, Doris Winton, and every uh, Doris Winton, Doris Farrell. What? Man, I crossed over. I put two grandmas together. Man, I messed up, didn't I? Anyways, Doris Farrell, little Hallie Doris is actually her real name. But anyhow, uh, she uh, used to tell me all the time, she said, Shane, she said, you might be the only Bible people read. And I got to thinking about that, Miss June. Uh, I may be the only Bible that people read. And I started thinking about that this way. What kind of version of the Word of God am I giving them? What kind of life am I showing them? How am I presenting Jesus Christ to them? Let me put it to you this way. I think about a guy, I heard this story about this police officer going to arrest this woman for thievery of an automobile. And she said, I didn't steal this automobile. He said, well, ma'am, he said, uh, he said I, I, I'm sorry. He said, uh, I figured you had. You know, he said, when I looked on the back of your car right there, and I saw that fish. Y'all know that little fish emblem and on the back of cars and everything? It's in, in, in indicating that you believe in creation, amen, that God created, amen. That's what that little fish up and everything. And he said, uh, also, I saw that little sticker on the back of it right there that said, follow me to Sunday school, to such and such uh, Baptist church. And he said, uh, but I saw you flip that other car off. I had to figure that this was a stolen vehicle. Because I didn't think no church going folks would be flipping people off. Boy, you're awful quiet on me tonight. <laughs> Amen. She said, I didn't steal this vehicle. He said, well, that's my bad, ma'am, because I didn't think Christians would be flipping people off. You know, let's think about that. The way we conduct ourselves, the way we live, amen, hey, it cries out. Amen. You know, I think it was Gandhi that said uh, he, he, he would have been a Christian if it hadn't been for Christians. Y'all listening tonight? Y'all listening tonight? Hey, the way we conduct ourselves, God says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. We're here to reveal Jesus within us. He says, put off and put on. It's time for you and I to resemble who we say that we honor and please. We need to remember that. And then, Brother Carl, I see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. If you all go with me there tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Meaning, we're not here to please ourselves. We're not here to glorify ourselves. Here's the deal, Brother John. I'm not here trying to make a name for Shane Scott. I'm here to glorify the name that is above every name that every knee will bow to, Jesus Christ. That's the name that I'm here to glorify. That's the one, Brother Russell, I'm going to acknowledge. Amen. Why? Because that's the name that's above every name. Amen. I tell you what that name will cause me to do, Brother, Brother Mike. I'll go on my knees for that name. Say amen. amen. You see, the fact of the matter is that's what we're here to do. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the bullying down to the strongholds. Now, y'all get a hold of this. You understand what power we actually possess? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
I understand we're in a trying time and a troublesome day. I realize there's a lot of hardship and heartache out there. But if we as God's children would rise up and use what God has given us, it would affect this world in a very positive way and lives could be changed. Here's the deal. If y'all came into the church house tonight, and y'all started seeing your pastor sitting here start quaking in his boots saying, oh, I don't know what the next move is. Oh, I don't know what's next. Oh, uh, oh, y'all, go hide in a hole somewhere or another. How would that make you feel? How'd that make y'all feel? You say, well, preacher, we look to you. We, 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 we take that you actually have a relationship with God and that you trust in the Lord. Well, you ought to. Amen. And I do. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, I'm not here to quake and shake. I'm here to uplift and honor. Amen. I'm here to glorify. So here's the deal that I realize and I understand. Look, God said in his word, these things must come to pass. God told us in his word. And he also told us, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. So guess what, Brother Chip? I'm here to help stabilize things. I'm here to bring peace to the situation. I'm here to help people. Amen. Hey, I'm here to show one beggar where the other beggar can get his bread. The truth of the matter is, we have what we have because God's given it to us. What a great God we serve. And in the process of what we have and the time in which we're living in, it gives us a great opportunity. 1 Thessalonians 5, go there with me. You see, iron sharpeneth iron. How we conduct ourselves, Brother Tim, affects others around us. Let's say a storm is coming over, like the other night, where they cried out or called out and said, uh, we're under severe thunderstorm warning. And then there was some talk about maybe some tornadic activity. Now, here's the deal. I live in a trailer. How many of y'all have ever lived in a trailer and know what a storm's like when it comes over? Amen. I remember here, uh, that one that ripped up all those uh, places here. Uh, what y'all remember the one that came through and, and hit uh, at Cookville? Ripped all that up and everything? I remember the night that came over, I laid there in bed, brother, brother Vern, and we listened to our roof go. It's, it's like you're taking a sheet and you're just fanning that thing. Y'all with me tonight? Fan that thing. I laid there and I listened to that thing. And you know what I did? I started praising God. Y'all listen to me? Look, I'm not telling you I'm some super Christian tonight. But I started praising God because I got God's word on the circumstance and situation in which I live in. I started praising God. Because I understand who's in control of. I understand who has my existence. I realize that my life consists because of the Lord. And here's the deal. If God wants to take me home to glory, praise God, I get to heaven before y'all. So y'all better catch up and come on up there, amen, because I'll be waiting on you. But in the meantime, you better keep serving the Lord. Amen. You see, I'm not here to throw down or lay down on the things of God. I'm here to pick up and lift up. As God would have me to. I'm not worried about what's coming. Because I realize who has my existence. Who holds my life. Look under the hills from which come my help. My help coming from the Lord. You see that's where I get my strength. That's where I have my encouragement. And then I start looking at my girls and my boys. And as they look to daddy. As they, as they rely upon daddy. If they start seeing daddy falling apart. How's that going to affect their lives? Because daddy stands strong in his faith with God that builds their faith. And sometimes it's amazing to me how Miss Jewel, they'll pop off and say some things that all of a sudden puts me to shame. And I start thinking, man, God, I, help me to step it up because they're just putting it on daddy pretty hard over here because my faith ain't where it needs to be. Y'all with me tonight? And it gets a hold of me, Brother Darrell, and I start thinking about my faith ain't where it needs to be. God, help me to get stronger so that my kids can see a daddy that is solid in the things of God. Like I told you, Grandma's right. 
That may be the only Bible that people read sometimes. But what kind of Bible are they reading? 1 Thessalonians 5 or 6 says this, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let's don't do it like everybody else does. But let us watch and be sober of the right mind. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, sound mind, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. You see, here's certain things that are coming down the path that I know, Miss Kay, that is not for us. It's for them. Talking about the world. Not for us. So guess what I do? I warn Miss Reba. I preach and I tell people, you need to get right with God. You need to accept Jesus Christ. You need to get saved. I preach and I teach Miss Sherry. I warn and I warn and I warn. Why? Because I know what's coming for them. Not for us. See, I'm already sound and I'm already sealed and I'm already safe with the things of God. And in the process of that, knowing and seeing, the Bible says knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It's why we preach and we teach and we warn and we try to compel them to rise up and accept Jesus Christ. And yet, many people just keep going on their little merry ways. I'm wondering what's going on. We're here tonight to stand for what God's put us here for, and that is being the light to the lost and dying world. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, if you will, verse number 1. Hebrews 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says in verse number 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Grandma, I think you were right. There are a lot of people reading us day in and day out. They're watching us, Brother Carl. They're studying us, seeing you, if we are what we say that we are. I told you about the time when I worked for A&S Steel. I'll never forget it. I came in. I'd only been there for about two weeks. And as I was clocking in about 6 o'clock in the morning, and I punched the time clock, and I was heading back to my workstation back over there where I worked in the uh, shipping department. As I was making my way coming through the building right there, I encountered a young fella. He walked up to me and he said, uh, hey, you're a Christian, aren't you? Well, my first response was to say, yeah, I am. But the, third, uh, but the, but the thought hit me. He's been watching me. He's been studying me. He's been looking at me. Now, this fellow that came up to me, we never had said any words amongst ourselves. I'd been there for two weeks, didn't know who he was. He walked right up to me and told me this, and I said, yes, sir, I am, with a very sober sounding voice. He said, I can tell. I can tell. He said, I just want to let you know. He said, I just got saved yesterday. Amen. He said, I just wanted to share that with you. Praise God. He sought me out to let me know he's one of us. Y'all get what I just said right there? But God taught me a little lesson that day. He revealed to me how many eyes were upon me. Even people that you don't think of, even people that you don't know. And so I started to weigh that out. I started to think about that, Miss Joyce, about all these eyes upon me. And I'm here to tell you, it will really humble you and it will really sober you in your thinking. As in other words, y'all know how it is at the factories. Sometimes somebody wants to get over and tell one of those uh, jokes, you know, those little nasty jokes that sometimes people tell. <laughs> And I made sure I wasn't around to hear any of those jokes. Because that young fellow was watching me. And I got to think about the other people that might be watching me. And I made sure I wasn't around to hear none of those jokes. You know why? Because I realized the impact that I was having upon people. 
I also made sure that I didn't shirk my time when I was working there and I give every bit of my time that I said I would when I was on the job, I worked, I did my job. I also made sure that everything that I did while I was working was honest and upfront and everything, you know, people were watching. And the more and more I thought on this, and the more and more I really took this in, I'm here to tell you, it was really life changing. You see, how many times have we acted a fool? How many times have we done things that truthfully we've done a lot more damage than we've ever done good? And it was very humbling to me. Look what he says. Wherefore, seeing we're, we, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that's set before us. In order for us to do this thing the right way, Brother Tim, we're going to have to get some things out of our life. We're going to put some things aside. We're going to have to get rid of some things. Listen, if you're listening at home, there's some things that hinder us from doing the very work that God has put us to. Hey, people are looking at us. They're looking up to us. And as they're seeing these things in the days in which we're living in, it's time either to shine for God or we'll dim for the world. And I'm here to tell you, I'd much rather, Brother Kenneth, shine for God. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You say, preacher, what do you mean? The cross. Now I want you to understand something, brother. I want you to really understand something, brother. God is not asking me to do what Jesus did. Go with me to Galatians chapter number two. Man, you all are quiet tonight. We just now get into preaching mode. Galatians chapter number two, verse number 20. Look what he says. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which, now, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, here's the thing. He goes on to say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Meaning I ain't here to hinder it, I'm here to uplift it. I cannot, Miss Sherry, get on that cross and do what Jesus did. I can't do that. And God ain't asking me to. That part's over with. Jesus hung on that cross 2,000 years ago, came out of that grave, amen, hey, he's alive forevermore. That part's over with. That was Jesus' part. I can't do that. But God ain't asking me to. God ain't asking me to. Look what he says here. Go back with me. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, stand therefore, verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore. What God wants you to do is just stand. Stand where he's put you. Here's the thing I want you to understand. We read these stories out of the Bible and we start saying, well, preacher, I'm not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You don't have to be. God ain't wanting you to be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did their part. <laughs> they went into the flames of the fire. Amen. Hey, they were put in the furnace. That was their part. What God wants is for you to do your part. He wants you to stand where he's put you. That might be being a mother at home, taking care of your kids. Stand there. Stand there where God's put you. It might be that you're being a daddy, having to go there working in a factory. Stand there. I don't know what your part is. Whatever it is, stand where God put you. Let God use you where you're at. Stand there for it. That's what he's talking about. The first thing I want you to notice right here, David. Well, we like it. We like the story of David. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. 1 Samuel 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, 
Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts uh, of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Now those are pretty powerful words. But God is not asking you today to be David. He gave us the story of David to remind us that when we step up to the challenges of, in life, he gives you the strength you need to go through them. Now here's the deal. Maybe your David event might be on the side of the highway up here where an officer has pulled you over for speeding, and your challenge might be how you take that ticket. Amen. Maybe your challenge is to have your house burned down. Y'all with me tonight? To have your house burned down and know how you're going to glorify God in the process. I don't know what the hurdle and the obstacle that you have to overcome, but I got news for you. David was a, was a giant called Goliath, and God gave him the strength and the ability to overcome him and bring God the victory. Whatever your situation is, God will give you the strength to overcome and give you the victory in your life at your time. I'm not looking for another David. He had his time. I'm not even looking for Jesus Christ back on the cross. That's over with. I'm looking for him in the air. Say amen right there. Amen. So in the process, I don't need another David. You don't need another David. We got a David. We don't need another Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We got him. We got them fellas. We don't need another Elijah. Go with me. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse number 21. Now here's the deal. He's having a showdown with the religious crowd of the day. Y'all get that? He's having a showdown with the religious crowd of the day. By the way, don't think that this is a new battle on the, whole, on the home front. The fact of the matter is, there's been battles uh, in the religious world all the way back to the beginning of it. Amen. And here's old Elijah having a battle, the world religion. That's what he's doing. Look what he says. And Elijah came unto the people, verse number 21, and all the people, and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They're trying to be a little political correctness right here. Amen. Didn't answer a word. We're, we're, we're not going to say yay or nay on this situation, uh, Elijah. We're going to wait and see how this thing pans out. You know, how it's going to play out. How this showdown right here on Mount Carmel, how it's going to turn out. So Elijah went on and he said unto the people, he said, I even, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, uh, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullets. Let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it, and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullet and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods, little G-O-D-S-S, and I will call upon the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire. By the way, Elijah already knew who was going to answer. There's only one. And by the way, we know who's going to answer still yet today. There's only one. Amen. Read on with me. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered him and said, it is well spoken. You know, I don't know what your situation is in the religious world. And I don't know what hurdle you might have to overcome. I'm not asking you to be Elijah. He's had his time. I'm asking you to be you. When God says, stand therefore, he's calling you out tonight to tell you it's your opportunity to stand for him in your life where you're at. That's what it is about. You see, I think a lot of times we hear these stories about these great people in the Word of God and we start envisioning uh, all they went through and the things that they overcome and we start saying things like this, Miss Reba, there ain't no way I can do that, preacher. 
You don't have to. All you've got to do is what God's called you to do. You don't have to be David. David's David. You don't have to be Elijah. Elijah was Elijah. All you have to be is who God has made you. And act upon that. God's only looking for people to rise up and be faithful to him. Look, how difficult is it for you to take and read your Bible daily? How hard is it for you to go to your knees and pray one for another? I told you the key to all this is prayer. Look at it with me. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Lifting each other up in prayer, especially at a difficult time in which we're living in. And when we do a thing like that, it's an amazing thing how God shows up. And now you become the next David. Now you show up as the next Elijah. Now you show up as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know why? Because you did what God called you to do. And that's praying one for another. Having a heart one toward another. That's how it works. The network that God has is that we're all joined together by the blood of Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit of God. And by that connection that we have, when I start praying, praise God, it takes and works throughout the whole network. And lives begin to be changed and souls begin to be saved. And it's amazing what God starts doing like the little baby we're praying about tonight. God hears those prayers. Lives start changing. Go with me to Esther, chapter 7. Esther, chapter 7. So God ain't asking me to be the next David. God ain't asking me to be the next Elijah. And God ain't asking me to be the next Esther. I know there's obstacles in our lives. I know there's hurdles for, for us to overcome. Here's a young lady, Brother John, that uh, if she was to confront the king without the king's approval, it could have meant her life. You read the whole book of Esther, wonderful book. When Mordecai came to her and said, listen, do you think that just because you're in the palace, that when they find out that you're a Jew too, that your life's going to be spared? If Haman gets what he wants, if Haman gets what he wants, your life's going to be at stake too. Now you need to do this not only for your people, but your life also depends upon this. Go back and read it. Go back and read it. So she was confronted with a challenge here, what she should do. Chapter 5, she goes before the king and she's in the outer, uh, outer, uh, I guess, courtyard where she's out there waiting. King sees her out there. And he does something rather unique and wonderful. Brother Taylor, he extends that scepter out there. Amen. He says, come on in. He opens the door for her. You say, what do you mean, preacher, opens the door for her? He allows her to have an audience with him, if you will. He asked her what her decree was, and she said, if you will allot me this, I'd like to make you a dinner. And not just you, I want you to bring Haman to so look with me, verse number 1 of chapter 7. The Bible says, So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen, and the king said again uh, unto Esther on the second day of the banquet, at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. That's pretty powerful words right there. Now remember, her life was at stake. But he loved Esther. And he wanted to please Esther. Verse number three. 
Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not con uh, countervail the king's damage. Then the king Asher's answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he and where is he that dost presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. I'm not asking you to be the next Esther. I'm just asking you to have the courage to serve God in the capacity he has got you. You see, the reason why we read about David and Elijah and Esther and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is because they served God in their time and honored God with what they had and pleased him with their actions. You see what God's asking out of you tonight? Go back with me to the text and look and see what he says. Stand, therefore. Sounds like a simple request. Stand, therefore. And it really is not as difficult as sometimes we make it out to be. If we take the actions of what he says next, look what he says. Having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all. Y'all help me out tonight. Sometimes my education may not be quite as it ought to be, but has the word all changed? Does all still mean all? A-L-L. -L. All? You mean to tell me if I do what the, uh, the Lord says in his word right here, I can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked? You betcha. You betcha. You see, when we carry out what God wants us to do, and we, when we just stand where God has us, victory has already been had. Like I told you this morning, Brother Lester Roloff told Brother David Gibbs, he said, David, David, we don't fight for the victory. We stand in the victory. We are more than conquerors. We've already got victory. It was said on the cross of Calvary. Oh, Dad, where's that steam? Oh, Gray, where's that victory? Hey, do we not understand what God's done? Hey, we've already got victory. But we walk around as if we've lost our best friend. As if we've already lost the battle. The truth of the matter is we've already got victory. You know what the world would like us to do? They'd like for us to cower. They'd like for us to cower. They'd like for us to just go away and hide in some hole somewhere or another. I got news for you. I ain't cowering. I ain't hiding. God said for me as a believer is to let my light shine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let my light shine. I'm going to let my light shine. You know why? That's the only way the lost is going to see by me. Let my light shine. Don't you understand this ain't about you? This ain't about me. This is about him and all those people that don't know him. And the only way that they're going to see the right way to the way to Jesus Christ is if you and I stand where God has put us. And haven't done all to stand. Stand there for me. With your loins girded about with truth. You see, this is about you getting beyond you. Look with me in verse number 18 of our text. If you hadn't figured it out yet, if you hadn't got it yet, look with me. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 
I don't know what you thought about prayer, but let me enlighten you some on some prayer. Prayer is not for you. Did y'all get that? You see, if my prayer life is like this, God give me this, and God give me that, and God give me this, and God give me that, that's a pretty selfish prayer. No, my prayer is for that little girl. My prayer is for Brother Lonnie. My prayer is for each and every one of you. You know why? Because I want God to do a great work within each and every one of you. And when I take and I start lifting y'all up in prayer, guess what? Something miraculous happens. Then next thing you know, Brother Darrell, you start lifting me up in prayer. Check that out. Brother Carl, you start praying for me. And that's the way it works, brothers and sisters. Because God doesn't want us focused on ourselves. He wants us looking on the needs of others. But it starts with us just standing where God's put us. You see, if my prayer life is all selfish and self-centered, it's a very weak prayer life. My prayer life is for others. I don't mind anybody asking me, preacher, pray for me about this, and preacher, pray for me about that. I'm glad, Miss Jewel, to be able to do that. You know why? Because that's why God's got me here. And it brings a lot of happiness to my life because now I understand my purpose and my usefulness. And so I do. I pray for others. And something miraculous happens along the way. Miss Claudia, people start praying for me. And God starts answering things. God starts healing things, and God starts doing things. You see, the whole thing, if my people, which are called by my name, will what? Humble themselves. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. That's the key. Every head bowed, every eye closed, and we look around. You see, we're here for such a time as this because God's brought us to this time. God's give us the opportunity. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather, I'd much rather be the Shane Scott of my day. I hope and pray as you're sitting there tonight, maybe Brother Mike, you're saying, Lord, make me the best Mike, Andrews, I can be in the day in which I live. Maybe Brother Byrne, I don't know, you know, you know, you think about where God's brought you and where God's got you, you know. Let me be the best Vernon Teeters that I, I, I can be, God. 